security why diversity matters. Today I'm calling from a small town on the slopes of Africa's tallest uh, mountain, Kilimanjaro. And uh, I do apologize if there's a bit of delay in my audio delivery as well as my uh, internet connection, connection, but I hope that um, the webinar will run smoothly. So a brief introduction about the Women in Tech Alliance. The Women in Tech Alliance is a platform for in-depth, cross-cultural and cross-industry exchange that paves the way for thought leadership, global impact and tangible change. We are breaking gender stereotypes and minimizing the impact on individual performance through personal and professional advancement. And our mission is to empower and support 1 million women in technology by 2030. Our activities at the Women in Tech Alliance are impacted by the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And it's on this basis that we are organizing, we have organized the webinar here today on women in cybersecurity. Now, I'm going to share with you a video about the women in tech. And then later on, my colleague, um, Evelyn will take you um, through uh, the panel introduction, but first the video. us here right now let me take you through the platform features on the upper left of your screen or on your mobile phone there is a public chat function here i posted some information about the women in tech as well as our linkedin page could you please uh, i would invite you to join us um to follow through uh, some of our updates at the women in tech alliance on the bottom right of your screen if you cannot see my presentation right now Next to the hand signal, I'd like to draw your attention to the restore hand button, button presentation. Uh, would you click on it so as to follow through the panel's presentation today? Before I hand over to Evelyn, I'd like to introduce the EU Tech Chamber. So the Chamber is a registered NGO with the mission and vision technology of Legis started in 2015 with over 2,000 members plus and counting with the membership best organization to enable businesses use technology for the benefit of mankind. Headquartered at uh, Badwise uh, in our Tiganzi office. And then 
Um, so for the chamber, each alliance holds a webinar each month. There are 16 alliances of the chamber. There are regional alliances, tech alliances, as well as the impact alliances. Under the regional alliances, you'll find Latin America, China, as well as Africa for the emerging market, and also one for German speaking Europe. Uh, under the tech alliances are IoT, mobility, energy through to food farming and fisheries, and the impact alliances, finance, SDGs, Women in Tech, which is organizing this webinar today, as well as climate action. Together with the EU Senate arm um, of the EU Tech Chamber, we organize 200 plus webinars per year uh, with over 684 speakers. Each alliance holds a, an expo each year. These expos are hybrid events happening around major European cities. The Women in Tech Alliance will be holding one next year in Vienna to empower more women in technology by 2030. 50,000 plus registrants to our webinars and 90% of audience, company owners and decision makers making the AU Tech platform number one for technology exchange and business networking in the EU. So after the webinar comes the networking meeting and I will leave in the public chat Later on, a link to join our next networking meeting at the Women in Tech on the 6th of December. Here we will give exclusive access to the speakers as well as panelists. These meetings are dedicated to exchange ide on ideas, on cooperations and projects, but also you find us talking about EU projects as well as funding. Each alliance discusses a funding program um, of their own interest. If you join the Africa Alliance, for instance, you'll find them discussing uh, funding project programs related to sustainability in Africa. Women in Tech will be looking at scholarship opportunities for more girls to join STEM education, but also funding opportunities for women-led or majority women-owned um, tech startups. So the EU Tech uh, has a wider ecosystem and just events and networking. We have insights programs as well as tech platform. Each alliance holds their white paper and also position paper. I am glad to have Evelyn here, who has been a very key, a major contributor in the Women in Tech 2022 position paper. And uh, for our alliance, we'll be looking at accessibility of payments and jobs, removing systemic barriers to empower more women join technology but also self-care and uh, digital uh, tools um, for women's well-being. Each week, there will be newsletter will be sent out to orient on upcoming EU tech activities, but I'll also like to do the divisions for Europe magazine, which is our quarterly print magazine. Here you'll find articles how you're using science, innovation, and technology to transform society sustainably. The print edition reaches 10,000 European decision makers directly, as well as 100,000 readers. Our tech team will give you a promotion and marketability support under the social media support, align your company with ESG under the digital transformation support. But later on in the webinar, you will see me issue our three certificates uh, under our climate uh, action support awards, as introduced in the previous slide that each alliance holds an expo each year. This expo's ending award. We have one coming up on February the 23rd with the SDG Alliance, where we will have 17 winners for each SDG category. Each winner will receive a marketing and promotional package valued at 10,000 euros. I will invite you at this point to join our Women in Tech um, Alliance LinkedIn group and also follow the EU Tech uh, LinkedIn group to uh, submit your. Uh, Submit your application right now. The open you can submit that in, and as well as sponsor the award. Our team will be able to do this and move it to the virtual external security and manage your own events and the tech forum, which I will introduce in the next slide, but also in the public chat. I've left a link here. Yeah, you can connect, network, and grow. I'll encourage you to set up a profile so as to match with over 50,000 plus global tips. Executive access and and lastly engage and benefit with the ET chamber. Our contact details are here. I'd like to wish you all a fantastic webinar. And now I hand over to 
Evelyn uh, for the panel introduction and uh, then to open the panel for yeah for discussion. Evelyn, over to you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Svetlana, uh, for the introduction to UTEC and to the panel. Um, a warm welcome to everyone who's joining us. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening from where you're joining us from. Um, today we are discussing women in cybersecurity, why diversity matters. And um, what's interesting is that according to Deloitte, the proportion of women in tech-related roles was only 23% in 2020, and they predict that it will be uh, 25% in 2022, so still very low. And um, according to World Bank, when we now get into cybersecurity, World Bank says women account for only two out of 10 cybersecurity professionals, despite representing almost half of the global workforce. And what's interesting is that even um, as this women, uh, the number of women is quite low in terms of cybersecurity, the crime against women specifically is, is very high. Women are more vulnerable to cybercrime cyber uh, in terms of cyber bullying, cyber stalking, and, and all kinds of uh, cyber crime. So our panel today is going to be helping us to unpack that. And one of the interesting things that we discussed with the panel, even just before they joined, before we started the session, was um, not everyone on the panel is technical. So there's that assumption that cybersecurity is more of a technical goal, but we'll hear from the panelists about that. The other issue that we, you know, we discussed was um, a lot of cybersecurity and tech related uh, women will find themselves in a room full of, of men. And so um, we'd like to find out you know, from our panelists what, what that experience is like, because that, um, that affects um, whether women get into this, this uh, cybersecurity or not, or find it attractive or not. So the first panelist that I want to introduce is uh, Laurie James. Uh, Laurie James is from um, South Africa. Uh, is it Botswana, uh, South Africa? She's a seasoned specialist uh, offender profiler, uh, forensic criminologist, and certified security professional with a background in intelligence. She has extensive experience in the assessment and profiling of violent, sex, financial, and cyber offenders. She frequently testifies as an expert witness in criminal trials. Um, at present, she's the, she's the managing director of Cyberati Consulting Services. Um, she's focused on the development of effective crime intelligence and education tools to assist communities and law enforcement professionals to cope with emerging security threats, uh, internal, sorry, internet and social media based threats and predation, including but not limited to cyber stalking, cyber bullying, uh, et cetera. Um, the development of Vicecard profiling software um, will assist investigators through challenging investigations with checklists and support enabling the sharing of critical information between law enforcement agencies in real time. Um, she's also a seasoned presenter at seminars and conferences globally, and she's also a best-selling author. So what's interesting to hear is, you know, I'd love to hear about your experience, Laurie, uh, in terms of moving from intelligence or security into cybersecurity. Um, so wel welcome, Laurie. Um, the next panelist that I want to introduce is Dr. Maha. Dr. Maha is uh, the head of business development and corporate marketing at Summer Partners. And Summer Partners is one of Germany's leading independent IT and engineering consultancies in the field of security. Uh, she has a PhD in marketing uh, and international B2B relationships. Uh, she covers corporate marketing, strategy and business development, security, architecture, processes, and capacity building. Geographically, she covers Germany, French-speaking countries, and also internationally. Her experience is in international business development consulting uh, in Industry 4.0 in the automotive sector. And she also has experience in, uh, as a researcher or lecturer in eye tracking, uh, market studies, consumer behavior, sales techniques, and digital marketing. A very warm welcome to you, Dr. Maha. Um, the third panel, panelist that I want to introduce is Malini Mystery. Malini is a cyber manager at KPMG in Sydney, Australia. So we have a, quite a diverse panel from across, um, across from Europe, Africa, and, and uh, Australia. Um, in her role with KPMG Australia as cyber defense, um, um, 
cyber defense and cloud security manager. Um, she's quite skilled and talented in cyber as a cyber security professional with extensive experience in risk assessment, security accreditation, Azure Cloud, Active Directory, IAM, security maturity assessment, project man management, et cetera. She demonstrates exceptional stakeholder management skills and leverages professional relationships to achieve positive business outcomes. She's passionate about improving systems and increasing stakeholder capability through education. She's a keen problem solver who enjoys developing innovative solutions to complex matters. And before doing cybersecurity, ethical hacking, she spent 10 years in the financial industry as a financial planning and financial risk advisor. Uh, so we'll be hearing more about her transition in terms of career. So a very warm welcome to you, Malini. Uh, to start us off, we'll have presentations um, in that order by uh, Lori, you will go first, and then Dr. Maha, and then uh, Malini. We'll hear brief pre presentations from them, and then we'll take uh, questions and questions from the panel. So if you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the chat. Welcome, Lori. Thank you very much for the very super welcome. Um, I'm looking forward to this talk. And it's a great pleasure to be here with you today. Um, so I'm going to start on slide one, which is a little bit of uh, about our company. So my company is called um, Cyberity Consulting Services um, and Cyberity Group. So we sit in three countries. For the French-speaking people here, you can make contact with Jaffa Farah in France. Um, we also have a division in Canada where Andy Simone has set up and myself for Africa and um, on the consulting side. Our company is divided into three parts. So we have the consulting services where the cyber risk and global security services as well as an e-platform, the e-learning platform for law enforcement sits. Um, underneath uh, that, we have the integrated solutions division that looks at the identification and authentication technology services for both goods and people identity. And we also have track and trace mobility as well as counterfeiting solutions. Our third division is engineering, and there we work in the field of clean energy and clean water, primarily a sewerage to clean water system that we can provide at, at fairly reasonable rates to specifically disaster management and the military or any forward bases. But we also can supply water with one of our containers to 1,500 people, which is rather phenomenal, and it's mobile. Moving on to tech, um, I'd just like to look at the current landscape of, of cybersecurity. So the field has lacked diversity since it began really in the 1980s. Um, more women have entered the field recently, but we're still very underrepresented in cybersecurity. What do we contribute this to? Well, some people contributed to the failure of the education system, other people to stereotypes and more still to tech companies not really prioritizing inclusion and diversity. Um, as far as opportunities go in cybersecurity, they're growing really rapidly and companies have to fill positions um, at the moment. Um, many cybersecurity roles have offer very high salaries and one has to wonder why women are not entering this field. So a recent Gartner survey, the link is in the presentation, the cybersecurity skill shortage is now considered the top organizational concern um, in 63% of companies when it comes to risks. And this outweighs the increasing uh, uh, privacy regulation and the cloud con uh, computing concerns. Um, the survey also indicates that not only do many organizations have unfulfilled cybersecurity positions, but it takes approximately six months to fill a cybersecurity opening. Almost half of the organizations that were surveyed indicated that they've experienced security incidents due to the lack of security staff or specific skill sets over the past two years, and that's really concerning. Um, globally, women fill 19% of tech-related jobs at the top of global tech companies, um, compared to men who hold 81% um, of these posts. And women comprise approximately 28%, while men represent 72% um, in a PwC 
report, and that's of your top management structures. So women are really, really underrepresented in the cybersecurity um, industry, uh, currently making up our stats uh, indicate 24% of the workforce in a field where women can and should be contributing to solutions to keep the world secure. It's a gap we shouldn't ignore. In Africa, it's even more of a problem where women are really, really badly underrepresented. Um, why does diversity man matter in your workforce? Well, firstly, diverse teams um, avoid more errors. Research has shown that diverse teams make better decisions than homogenous ones. When a team lacks diversity, oversights often become more likely. Uh, diverse companies actually make more money. A study from McKinsey found that companies in the top quartile of, for gender diversity on executive teams were 25% more likely to have above average profitability than companies in the bottom quartile. The same applies to ethnic and cultural diversity. The report found the companies in the top quartile for ethnic diversity outperformed at least diverse companies by 36% in profitability. So if you needed motivation, there's your motivation to diversify. Diverse companies also have less turnover. Cybersecurity has a retention problem. I think we're all aware of that. And a study estimated uh, by um, Capital Center estimated a turnover cost for the tech industry of $6 billion a year, in part due to stereotyping and harassment in the workplace. So therefore, it's really important to create more diverse um, environments because this will help to counteract the effect um, three quarters of employers and job seekers said that the workplace diversity is important to them. What are the benefits for cybersecurity specifically? Um, bringing in diverse perspectives to cybersecurity field and the scope must continually evolve to keep up with hackers and security threats. Successful cybersecurity companies benefit from building creative and multifaceted teams. In essence, the breach of incidents we aim to prevent originate from every country, from all genders, from all ages, and from all over the world. And we must be able to think like the attackers. But it's impossible, of course, to understand every single culture. And that's the reason that we need to diversify our teams. Because if we don't bridge the gap, if we don't become security-minded citizens, never mind business people, we will lose the digital war. Increasing income disparity is also something that we need to look at. Women have long been outnumbered, um, men in, uh, in higher education, um, and yet still women risk, um, so sorry, still women make less money in men a lot of the time, in part because women pursue lower paying careers and where they feel a lot more welcome. Tech is one of the highest paying and fastest growing fields in the world. It has also got a fairly low barrier to entry. Um, many security jobs only require an associate degree to start off. Even so, many women are put off because cybersecurity is overwhelmingly protected by white men. Um, we also need to close the according to from the ISC, the International Association of Certified Cybersecurity Professionals. The cybersecurity field must add. 2.7 million employees to national force gap. Yeah. Uh, a recent Sorry, Laurie. I, I think you're breaking off a little bit. We can hardly hear you. Laurie, can you hear us? Oh my, she's dropped off. Oh, 
Are you back? Did we lose everyone? <laughs> Laurie, can you hear us? Lori, let me ask one more time. Can you hear us? If not, we can um, maybe go to the next um, presenter. I think let's do that. Or oh, Lori is back. Okay. Can you hear us? I'm, I'm not hearing you guys. You can't hear us? Oh, my. Um, <laughs> Dr. Maha and Malini, can you hear? Can you hear me? Okay, so Laurie, then it's it's, it's on the side. Let me try and come back in. Can you hear me? Yes. Well, then I'll just continue. Yeah. <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, I just don't have the control here, but. If you can move to the next slide for me, that would be great. Okay, so what, do we, what are our obstacles and how do we overcome them? Several intertwined factors are <clears throat> at the root of the disparities in cybersecurity, making them difficult to overcome and creating a cycle that perpetuates barriers for underrepresented groups. Contributing factors include a lack of role models, Cybersecurity lacks representation by women, and many students lack relatable figures in the field to look up to. Girls' interest in STEM almost increases dramatically when somebody has a role model to look up to, and that they would feel more confident choosing a STEM career if the field had more gender equity. As far as social norms go, social cultural stereotypes, of course, create another barrier. Gender roles and racial stereotypes persist in society today, as we're all aware. And then, of course, there's the pipeline problem. Some companies say that the workforces lack diversity because there aren't enough female applicants. There are many students studying computer science that are not currently working in the tech field. These students may be changing paths before finishing their programs or even after starting their careers. Experts are often referring to this trend in STEM as falling out of the pipeline. And then what can we actually do about this? Um, firstly, underrepresented groups face significant challenges in STEM, but these challenges are never insurmountable. There is always a solution. The following actions, in my opinion, can help achieve diversity in cybersecurity. The first is educate. Address the industry misconceptions. Many believe all cybersecurity jobs require advanced programming skills. In reality, some positions don't require any coding skills at all. I have no coding skills. In fact, I'm really not tech savvy. Um, cybersecurity also encompasses all types of roles, including compliance, defense, research, sales, many different positions. So many roles are highly technical. Yes, they are, but others are not. And many people in management are not technical at all. Um, as I said, I'm the managing director of a tech company and I'm not technical. I'm really not tech savvy. In fact, I cannot even set up a printer. Um, we are, and we are not marketing these jobs correctly or effectively because the the, the, the idea, the stereotype of the coder hunched over his keyboard in wearing his hoodie are really not what cybersecurity is all about. Um, meet the recruits where they are. So rather than waiting for applicants to submit their re re resumes, companies should act to connect with their potential recruits. For instance, they can forge partnerships with women schools and colleges. Companies can also communicate with learning institutions and participating at job fairs. And the last thing is continued mentorship. We cannot throw these kids into the deep end and not mentor them. 
So we need to set up proper mentorship programs which benefit not only young career professionals, but assist companies to retain female employees or women employees. Research shows that mentoring programs significantly boost management level representation of employees from historically excluded groups. And that concludes my presentation. I'd like to hand over to the next person and so sorry for the, the crash in, I, I don't know if it was my check or whose check or, yeah, but we're in Africa, so we expect the odd crash. Thank you so much, Laurie. Uh, quite an insightful presentation there uh, from Laurie. Thank you so much. Um, over to you, Dr. Maha. Thank you very much. For, for the moderation, Svetlana. Thank you, Evelyn. Thank you, Lori, for the nice um, insight and much needed topic um, and um, all the speaker today and the attendees. Um, I will um, start my speech with um, one word about Summer Partner, um, uh, Germany and Tunisia. Uh, Summer Partner selected by best uh, mid-sized uh, uh, company in the year um, uh, 2018 in Germany, member of European Cybersecurity Organizers, Organization, member of ITU, member of ICTU, and um, uh, labeled IT security made in Germany, IT security made in Europe. We are a security intelligence company. We are one of the leaders in Germany of um, in threat intelligence. I will start my speech with um, a nice cita citation from Lori. Uh, we need motivation. And <clears throat> um, especially in the amazing crisis in cybercrime, ransomware even with um, the global attention um, and cybersecurity has received in recent year um, a major skills sh shortage in skills and, um, and talent, uh, not only women, but um, um, in general. Um, the need are growing, especially with acceleration of digital transformation and use of remote work. However, the sector is recruiting, but already suffering from lack and gap candidates, um, we need, that's why we need motivation. <clears throat> um, I'm trying to go to, yes. Women in cybersecurity, um, my, my source here, Cybercrime mag magazine, Cybersecurity Ventures, um, a representation of women in the cybersecurity field um, before 11% in 2013, after um, we have 20% in 2019. Um, sees a woman position 30% 2017 and 20% 2019. And filling cybersecurity job, it's very interesting. Here we have 1 million in 2014, 3.5 million in 2021. And good start, but um, there is still much to do. Valorize and upgrade the skills of women and cybersecurity is much needed. Yes, we have in general, as I said, several talent gap with 53% um, um, of organization reporting a problematic shortage of cybersecurity skills. Aside from a gender gap, there is also several talent gap. And this is very a big problem. And we are not just talking here in cybersecurity firms. Most industry they, they, our days rely on technology to function, but they, they thus have needs in terms of cybersecurity. Um, in the field of cybersecurity, very different pictures emerge globally. While tests um, might indicate that there are gender difference in aptitude, capabilities, people's cultures will vary in, the, in their experience, have been different even in the starting point was the same. According to the International Information Security Certification Consortium, um, only about 24% um, uh, 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 um, uh, of cybersecurity workforce worldwide is female. In computing as a whole, women fill partial more than um, a, a quarter of a position. 
then we have to to say and we have to 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 um, <clears throat> or, um, here a big um, command um, a huge potential to encourage more more women to get into the field and close the gap the cyber security field is large to incorporate all skills the majority of which are covered by female expertise <clears throat> Um, I have collected some quick facts for our um, um, webinar today. Um, science, technology, engineering, math, STEM education is uh, getting a huge push in um, CVs in various uh, parts of the globe. And may graduates emerge with the skills and desire to pursue a career in cybersecurity. This unbalance in cybersecurity can create negative perception. And I, maybe I can go and can give a, a title to my speech today. Um, uh, in cybersecurity, it's time to break. It's time to break the stereotypes. And one of the, the stereotypes, the stereotypes that uh, women uh, don't have the capability to be SOC analyst, analyst to be um, a criminologist. Uh, uh, like Lori or like Malini, and historical careers remain for women attempt them to join um, or progress in the massive global security industry. We ha we haven't maybe the time to analyze this um, culture culture effects and um, and uh, these reasons, but it's um, a very interesting and important uh, subject today. The growing representation of women and cybersecurity represents a positive upward trend for both women. And and the cybersecurity industry as a how as a whole. <clears throat> To address this lack of gender diversity in technology sector, and especially in cybersecurity, it's important to understand, analyze the reasons for, for, for it, and implement strategies to enable a more diverse and inclusive workforce. Closing the gender gap will help pave the way for a future and gender diversity in cybersecurity field. Then, benefits of diversity in cybersecurity. Um, here I have some um, com common points with, with, with the presentation of Lori. Um, having more women in cybersecurity would, be, would, would help Boost the boost the, the industry and fill the drastic need of com that companies have for for top talent. Um, the the ECAC study found that a larger percentage of women are reaching top position. Um, um, the three big uh, important um, benefits, um, as 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 an example, um, uh, helping to bring different perspectives to the table, providing learning and growth opportunities, changing the study to, use, um, uh, to improve internal and exter external perception. I'm going to, to, to tell you about um, each uh, benefits. Benefits in diversity in cyber, of diversity in cybersecurity. The first one, bringing different perspectives to the table. Diversity can provide benefits in most industry, but it's important in cybersecurity. Um, uh, changing the status quo, um, there is uh, at least a perception that industry is sticky. <laughs> uh, and therefore, more, more suited to men than women. Uh, this is a societal issue, maybe also cultural issue um, IT fields have more associates with with men it's our reality but we have to do something providing learning and growth opportunity 44 percent of men in cybersecurity have postgraduate degrees but <laughs> it's important to say that it, 52 percent of women uh, have it and uh, what's more more women in the field are more likely to reach a leadership uh, position. Then we need people. Uh, we need to, to disparate backgrounds because the people we are uh, pursuing uh, threat actors, hacker, uh, bad guys also have a wide variety of background and experience. And this shows that gender diversity uh, comes with growth and learning opportunity. Um, to entire work of workforce and organization as a whole can benefit from a recruitment and a human resource of, for more highly qualified and ambitious woman. 
role of women in cybersecurity, the main subject of our webinar, um, diversity as a driver of an innovation. Cybersecurity needs more needs um, needs more women. Why? Because whether in terms of gender, um, I age, skills, nationality, diversity is a crucial issue issue for the success of a team. Promoting diversity within an organization has multiple benefits beyond the positive image that it gives companies that show diversity in their workforce are the most successful. And maybe it, it is um, um, a, sell, a sell argument for some company when we have more women, more success. It's the reality. <laughs> And initiative, I'm, I'm going to tell you about some initiative, international, European, but also African, to get more women in cybersecurity. The goal of this initiative, um, um, uh, identify and build the community of women professionals in the field of cybersecurity, um, encourage women professionals to come forward, become more active in the field, and raise their own visibility, providing a pl platform for women in cybersecurity. Um, this the road of parity in cybersecurity sector is still long, but there is no multiple um, initiatives uh, that aim to achieve it um, one day, maybe. Um, education, training, um, motivation, better appreciation, consideration of women in cybersecurity will be a crucial um, subject um, and crucial issue from economic, but also, as um, Malini said in our webinar preparation, it's, um, it's, um, it's maybe also ethical and social um, point of view. Um, examples for the, from, of these initiatives, um, we have uh, the very famous Women Society uh, uh, YCs, um, Women in Cybersecurity, non-profit membership organization that motivates women to get more um, maybe trust to, to, to work in this field. Women Society in Cyber Utus USA, um, uh, WOM, WOSEC is very famous, Women Security Global, Women for Cyber, EXU, um, 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 European Cybersecurity Organization, famous uh, foundation project, Cyber Women Digital Security Curriculum, European Cyber Monday, and why not maybe, um, Evelyn, uh, uh, we can organize uh, like an African Cyber Women Day, a world that would celebrate women with remarkable backgrounds and achievement across Africa. This is my proposition to uh, uh, Europe, European Chamber in Africa. And um, some apart now, we are already um, here, we can um, coordinate and we can partner with you in this issue. Uh, yes. <laughs> We have some partner cybersecurity conference since seven years. Um, it's established well established in the region and a national effect in Germany, but also international cybersecurity conference nonprofit event from our company. Um, uh, not only gives women experts a platform to present themselves, but also also gives many career changer the opportunity to inform themselves and start a new career. Um, we have um, here, um, the first one is industry, uh, the second one is the education, skills, uh, capability, in cybersecurity, and the third, third one is the very important thing that Summer Partner is doing every year. Um, we, are, we, we, we gave a, a award for, for young, um, uh, young uh, uh, ladies uh, that are um, doing master and bachelor in cybersecurity, and the best one is awarded from Sama Partner. This is our initiative, and I will close my presentation sadly with two or three um, testimonials. The best one, um, I like it. Um, one, um, Sisu in the field. I, I'm I cannot say um, his her name, but her position. But uh, I will share with you her testimonial. As a field, it's not very attractive to women because usually the language used is, for example, this position would require you to combat cyber threats or build resilience. And the second man may be an example. I could be a meeting with government representative, and everyone is male in many situations. I will be the only female. 
And um, I want to close my presentation with uh, uh, um, uh, with maybe more more uh, uh, motivation. But sadly, uh, testimonial testimonials will stimulate this motivation to do something for women and cybersecurity. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Maha. Um, that was interesting and very insightful as well. Um, in the interest of time, I know we don't have much time left, but I'll um, ask Malini uh, to give us the last presentation and then uh, we can go into the Q&A. Over to you, Malini. Yeah, Evelyn, unfortunately, because of the technical glitch, I can't share my presentation, but I'll be very fast. And I'll just introduce myself as well as why um, me, who has, who is a bachelor in financial accounting and majors in accounting, has come to cybersecurity world, how that happened. As Dr. Baha said with the last closing statement, you are the only, she was the only woman in a government meeting. And, you know, it, this happens a lot in when you are in the cybersecurity world, uh, being a cybersecurity defense like defense cyber architect and cloud security, you are in the engagements and you are by yourself. But what drives me to be here, I'll just share my part of the story. A um, couple, like three or four years back, this incident happened to one of my very good friends. She was a business owner. She had a very established business in Australia and Sydney. Um, and suddenly there was been a cyber attack on her financial data. And because of that, she lost a lot of financial losses, but she went into a very dark space and she got, she was very devastated. It took her six months to recover from what a lively, bubbly person just went in a deep place. That definitely inspired me or definitely changed my mindset that I have to do something and I have to change you know, there would be definitely a way to help someone. And there might be a lot of women who are going through this. And my journey of cybersecurity started. And I did my um, uni in ethical hacking. Then I started my journey from 10 years of financial advisory and financial planner. I started from scratch again in my 40s, but I was not, I was unstoppable. I was like there to start the journey. I was having attitude to learn. I went and learned all whatever needs to be. Got certified in um, in architect, in security architect, certified in security engineer. Got a certificate in lead auditor, and I'm not stopping yet. And if I can inspire someone, I would say it's an amazing industry to work with. And the best part, which I would address it, we all are talking about diversity and all that stuff. I have met the most amazing men in this industry who were there for me to lift me up, give me the door, you know, do this, this will help you too. And till today, like, you know, I can't even thank each and every one. And I'm meeting up still amazing guys who are always there. You can do it. Let's mentor this girl. Let's do that. You know, giving me all that advice to move ahead in this career so I would definitely say come and join it if a non-technical person from a financial background can come and be in a cyber security architect I'm sure there would be a lot of other girls who can come and join this industry so that's it that's my story and I'll pass it over to you guys to Evelyn to take it from here that's it thank you no, thank you. Thank you so much, Malini, for even sharing your story. You know, um, I think a lot of people want to hear that story and those kinds of stories of women who've um, made it and not necessarily. I think a lot of people think you must um, have done this as a university degree and such. And so maybe even just to start off the questions to you, Malini, to dig deeper into what you've shared, moving from finance to cybersecurity, what would your advice be to, to those women who have started out in a different area and want to branch into cybersecurity? What qualifications should they be pursuing? Undergraduate certification, and I know you've touched on it a little bit, but what advice would you give them? 
I, to start with Evelyn, I am mentoring few of the girls. You know, the first thing I would say, you have to have passion for cybersecurity because cybersecurity is a industry which is emerging. The technology is changing. It Cybersecurity is changing in such a drastic rate. What, what I've learned in my uni, which is not that back, like two and a half years back, things have changed. You know, I'm relearning. I am uh, going and getting more certifications on that, that I'm on top of it. I'm going and attending the conferences to be on top of the things what's said. But if someone is starting from scratch, they, they like how Laurie, as well as Dr. Maha has mentioned, it's a very broad spectrum of cybersecurity. So it is not like you have to go in technical deep down. You can go into guys, you can go into risk, you can go into cyber sales, which is like, you know, as a woman, we love talking and we have a great communication skills. Why don't you start with that and move your way up? I would say that, you know, you don't need to have a degree. Just get it. That's it. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, that's good advice. You don't need a university degree, get your certifications and stuff. So it's a rapidly changing environment. I like that, Malini. And um, there's a question here from uh, Dr. Rohan. And I think anyone can anyone uh, can answer that question if you want to answer it. Where can we learn more about uh, cybersecurity and what requirements do we need to have to learn or to get into cybersecurity? And I know you've addressed some of them. I don't know if there's anyone else who wants to add to that question in terms of requirements to get into cybersecurity and where can they learn more about cybersecurity? You are now. Do you want me to go ahead and say that? <laughs> go ahead. Okay. Um, Google is the best source. In cybersecurity, as I've mentioned, it's a very broad spectrum. If you are looking for, there are a lot of views which are very specific on governance and risk. Then you go and join those institutions, go and have a chat with those memberships and, you know, and what certifications are being required. But with the changing emerging technology in cybersecurity, things are becoming, you know, identity and uh, um, cloud security. If you're going into cloud security, you have to choose with these big players of cloud security, which is the Microsoft, Google Clouds, or you have to choose uh, from Amazon, you know, AWS. So start with these certifications and you start learning about these certifications and giving these exams slowly and slowly and getting into the industry and meeting up with these alliances like how Dr. Maha mentioned about, you know, women in cybersecurity. There are a lot of uh, channels which are available. You can start from there. You can meet people in, I'm in Sydney in Australia. I go and meet all these people in the auditors of, and go and talk about cybersecurity with the auditors or with the uh, cloud security groups. So you can start from there, but Google would be a great tool to start, kickstart with your uh, goals on that. That's my take. And also, if you want to learn, um, there are a lot of free resources out there as well. So Princeton University, Yale University, Harvard University, they all offer introductory programs. There are a lot of free courses on Udemy. If you just want to find out which field you fit into, go and have a look. Have a look at coding. You can have a look. There are a lot of free courses on Udemy. So those are useful. Well, check out what the universities are offering free of charge. That way it doesn't even cost you any money. And you can have and then you can explore where you fit because it, there are a lot of places that you could fit. Absolutely. Thank you, Laurie and uh, Malini. Um, there's one question that I had for you, Laurie, just uh, as I have you there. You know, um, you had a very interesting transition from intelligence or security to cybersecurity. Not really a transition, but sort of like an addition to your career. And um, that's for someone, again, just in line with what Malini shared from finance to cybersecurity. Yours is more aligned in terms of they're very related, but it's sort of like an addition. And um, what I remember, there's one panelist we had some time back who uh, was a psychologist and has gone on to develop an app um, which um, 
is, is sort of, it's called MindBank. If you can just Google it, it's called MindBank. So they, they, their background is that they have a degree in psychology, but they develop an app where, you know, you can answer questions on the app and it sort of downloads your mind onto that app. And, you know, the, 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 the you know, endless possibilities are endless. So in that line, you're also moving uh, very related from security to, to cybersecurity or from intelligence to cybersecurity. Do you want to talk more about that? Yeah, Just sure. So um, I, I started my career as a military, um, military air traffic controller and then intelligence. So I had a little bit of tech savviness then. But what I found as a criminologist, and um, we work with specifically serial murder, serial rape, these types of crimes, um, and fraud and things like that. And what we found, or what I found uh, specific to my journey, was that more and more we noticed that some element of the crime had a cyber component. So whether that person, the actual perpetrator, found his victims online, stalked his victims online, recruited his victims online in the case of human trafficking, uh, we see a lot of recruitment online. All our so-called uh, crimes that we understood all started to have this extreme cyber component. And that was where my interest started to, to, to peak. And I started looking at the risky behavior of children, the fact that parents don't understand the technology on their children's phones, the fact that new apps come out all, all, all the time and some with different threats than others. So I looked at the entire social media. I've also developed a number of questionnaires that we're busy turning into an app to assess risk when it comes to the use of social media and business risk when it comes to cyber. So it's, um, it's, it's quite a field. And But, uh, I mean, also we work with the schools a lot because we've seen the suicide rates go up with cyberbullying. So we've seen a lot of impact in the criminological field directly related to online behavior. And funnily enough, what we've even found is that kids have two personalities. They have their, their cyber the persona and they have their real persona. And now they're, they're, they're merging and they can't tell them apart, um, which, is, which is very, very interesting. So we're actually having convoluted problems with psychology actually mer merging between the two persona. So that's an additional fallout. But the problems are just increasing with CSAM, uh, sexual uh, child abuse material is doubling. We've had big, big problems on the human trafficking side and familial trafficking from within the home um, where the cyber has been used to, to hunt these familial traffickers because people think that a person can only be trafficked by moving them. Well, they're not. They're being trafficked in their bedrooms, in their homes, by their own families for money. Um, and this raised its head uh, during during COVID. So there's yeah. so much to do in cyber, and it's a really, really exciting field. No, thanks. Thanks for sharing that. Now, I know in the interest of time, we've really run out of time. We could go on and on about this conversation. But I want um, each one of you, starting with Dr. Maha, to just share with us, summarize in one or two sentences um, from what you shared, from what you talked about, what do you want your viewers, what, what do you want the viewers to actually take away? Just briefly, one or two sentences. I want to maybe um, say one thing because I am I'm not saying this in my speech companies, role of companies in cyber for women in order to, to integrate, reintegrate women in the cybersecurity field, motivate women to have um, um, a very good position, very good skills and capabilities. Company must find opportunities for women to help support um, and ensure their voices. Um, creating opportunity is the key here. And um, who will create opportunity? Organization, okay, it's very nice role that you are playing, but companies, industries have to do something. Um, many organizations are taking time, uh, like you, um, uh, to understand what they can do to improve this issue. Um, 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 but mm, I am saying, and there is saying that companies have uh, the, the big role to do it. I think that there is a strong relationship uh, between women and success, more women, more success. Good. Malini, what are your one or two sentences? For now. 
know, um, what I would say as a woman, because we have a great communication skill and soft skill, and cyber security thrives in creative problem solving. So it is one of those industries which is emerging as a problem solver. And I think more and more women come in this industry with their attention to detail. We we'll smash it. We we'll rock it. <laughs> I would say that. That's my take on that. As well as the other thing which I would like to add, this industry, we are doing something good for the humanity. You know, we are making sure like how Dr. Uh, Mark and Lori has mentioned about it. We are doing something good. You know, so that's a good, you'll have a good sleep tonight. Okay. Lori, one or two sentences. Well, my sentence is to anybody that's wanting to enter the field, find your passion, pursue it, and never give up. The doors are opening, and if they don't open, knock them down. If you knock once, twice, three, four, five times, it's eventually going to break and something will give. But never, never give up. Keep moving forward. Keep finding resources. Keep going online. Those resources are available, and they're free. And just keep bashing those doors down. Find your passion and follow it. Awesome. Awesome. I, I couldn't add anything more. It's been such a rich uh, conversation. Thank you so much to the panelists. Um, and I know we've run out of time. So over to you, Svetlana, uh, to close the session for us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Evelyn. It has been a really interesting discussion to follow. Find your passion. Pursue it. Never give up. More women, more success. And yes. we wrote it. <laughs> and thank, thank you very much. Knowledge. Thank you yes. very much to be in Africa today, my, my origin continent <laughs> <laughs> from <Yeah>. Germany. <laughs> yeah. And then speaking of um, finding opportunities online, we have the next Women in Tech Networking meeting on December 6th, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Central European time. I have left the link to join in the in the public chat function. Will you please register? You can meet the panel here today. If you have more questions, we can build on ideas and cooperations and projects around women in cybersecurity, why diversity matters. Um, also, we have the Women in Tech LinkedIn group. I'd invite you to join in and then to be admitted. You can post developments on your side, but you can also follow Women in Tech, which is updated from my side. And especially in appreciation to our panel here today, and as promised earlier, I am sharing my screen now, and uh, if you cannot see the screen again, I would like to draw your attention to the bottom right of your screen. The hand signal, there is an icon that you can click on to rest your presentation. And here I can confirm that one tree has been planted uh, for Lovely Gems in, in Africa in appreciation to the panel uh, with us. And <clears throat> this free certificate will also be sent to you shortly via email. And another one, uh, 